So in the previous lesson we have developed the package by using vid library mode and then included that package in here in our client application. And that time we had only one entry point in our package. But what if we'd like to create such package that would expose more than one entry point? And what I mean by that is this, that we could basically import some functionality like this from the sub pass. So in this lesson let's figure out how this can be done. Firstly, let's recall what functionality our package exposes. So in the index.js file of our package we have only one function, plug. And then to be able to import this function from the client applications we had to modify package.json file. And in here we had to specify a key called module, where we have basically provided the path to our main library file with that function. And then in our client application it would basically let us importing functionality from our package by using its name, like so. So now we're going to create another file which will also export some functionality. So in our package let's create new file called log.js, which is also inside the source folder. And here for demonstration we're also going to create only one function called log, which is basically going to be a wrapper around console log method. We're not going to complicate things too much, because our main job here is to configure it in such a way, so it can support multiple entry points of our package. So next we're going to add configuration to vidconfig.js file to generate two different bundles for every JavaScript file of our package, so that later we could import function log from the sub pass in the client application like this. So before going back to our package project, Let's just use this function login here to print out array of users. Later we're gonna need this to test our package. And now back to our package project. Let's go inside vid.config.js and here we're going to tell vid about all our entry points of our package. So basically, instead of specifying in here only one path, we will convert this to array, which will contain all references to all files that we're going to expose in our package. So I'm gonna add another render in here and reference that new file called log.js. So this way we have told vid about all our entry points and now let's see what will be generated when we run npm run build. So basically when we'll try to build our package. And as we can see vid has generated four files. So two files for every entry point because in order to provide support for importing our package as a common JS module by using function require, vid generates separate bundles. And that is why we have four JavaScript files here instead of two. But they all have the same name. So how can we customize the name? And thankfully, that option file name inside configuration file also can accept closure. And this closure takes two parameters. First one is format that we are generating bundle for either ECMAScript 6 or CommonJS module. And the second parameter here is the source JavaScript file name, which is in our case all JavaScript files are contained within source folder. So the name parameter will be either index or log. And here I'm gonna use a basic condition and check if vid is currently generating bundle for ECMAScript module we're going to use the following format for the file name. And if it is currently generating bundle for CommonJS module, besides using name as a file name, we're also going to use custom extension for this file specified inside format parameter. And this way we have customized names that we is going to produce while generating our bundles. Let's see what those names are. One more time, let's generate our bundles by executing npm run build. And this time we still see four files, but all of these files now have more appropriate names. And again, all these files have been generated inside the dist folder of our package project. So now back to file package.json and in here, in order to provide the way for importing our sub-module by client applications, we also need to add an entry for our second entry point inside this export object. So let's add another object and use the key log. This will be a key what client applications will use when they are gonna import our sub-module log. 
just like we have already used in the main.js of our client application in this import. And also since we have modified the names which Vite produces while generating bundles, we also need to correct these names inside package.json. So firstly, let's replace plug word with index in all these file names. And then one by one, let's correct every pass so it points to the correct file from the dist folder. Otherwise, importing things from our package is not going to work. And now it's time to check if we will be able to import functionality from the submodule of our package. So, instead of publishing our package to npm registry, we have used one trick by running command npm link inside the project of our package in order to make this package available globally in the operating system and in addition to that to add a link to this package into a node modules folder of the client application we had to execute npm link but with package name inside the root of our client application and this way this command will add link to our package inside node modules folder and finally let's get back to testing and run development server inside our client application so that we could test if we would be able to import functionality from this submodule log and then use this imported function to print our list of users in here and now switch over to the browser and as we can see we have two logs here first of which is produced by our custom function log that comes from our package so importing functionality from the second entry point of our package worked fine and we could even remove this log statement and instead print out result of the function plug by using our custom log function. Everything is working fine, so in this lesson we have reviewed how to build our library in case it has more than one entry point. And as we can see it makes this process very simple. Let's continue in the next lesson.